a shocking new poll out from the New York Times, mind you, that shows Democrats, they've washed their hands of Joe Biden. They want nothing to do with Joe Biden. Shocking results. We got to go through them all. And we'll talk about the reasons why, which frankly should be pretty obvious, I guess, to everyone except those in the White House. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trish Regan Show. I'm Trish. Quick reminder, do me this favor. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast on Apple iTunes, on Spotify, wherever you're getting your podcasts. Hit that subscribe button. The same thing here if you're watching the full video on YouTube, Rumble, Facebook, wherever you're seeing it. It's really important. Parts of today's program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There's never been a better time to invest in precious metals than right now. So go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for more Again, that's LegacyPMInvestments.com for more. All right, let's talk about this poll. Wow, shocker, right? I I, I mean, I I can't really say shocker anymore just because I think I said shocker when it comes to like literally every poll out and then shockingly, they're worse. They just keep on getting worse. But listen, when you've got an economy that's, you know, struggling as much as this one, when you've got inflation that's so out of control, the reality is, that your own party doesn't want you anymore. And if your own party is smart, they're gonna primary you, Joe Biden. That's exactly what I think is gonna happen. I mean, we've already heard all about the age, right? And you don't have to hear it from me, which you may have heard it before. I only make the point that while I'm not an ageist, I do think that he's up there. A lot of our politicians are up there, which may explain some of the problems. Anyway, um, he's 79. And if he were to go for another term, my gosh, he'd be well into his 80s by the time he was done. And so I think that's a concern. New York Times did actually put that out over the weekend, writing a piece on that. But let me just get to these numbers because you need to hear these right now. 64% of Democrat voters say they don't want Joe Biden to run in 2024. Only 26% of Democratic voters surveyed by this New York Times Siena College poll actually said that they wanted him to run in the next election. When you look at his overall approval rating, what you see is roughly around 33%. That's like lower than anybody at this time in the cycle. And I get it, right? I get why. Look at what's happened. We're going to get new inflation reads this week, but inflation has just spiraled out of control in ways that I think even if he wanted to say, look, not my fault, not my fault, the American people still hold him responsible. All those ways that it spiraled out of control, they say, hey, you're our president. So sure, you know, you've heard me talk about it. There's plenty of blame to go around, including with the Federal Reserve. But ultimately, Americans are saying, this isn't working. And you know what? They're right. Now, uh, there was the governor in New Hampshire, Sununu, who came out and said, it's Janet Yellen's fault. Sure, it's Janet Yellen's fault, partly her fault anyway, and, and she should be fired. I think I've said the exact same thing many times. After all, she should know better, right, as Treasury Secretary, given that she used to be over at the Federal Reserve. But she's a political hack. I mean, I think that's what we all need to, to understand about all these folks in the White House right now. There are a lot of political hacks. And so even if they're trained economists, even if they're trained constitutional law scholars, even if they're whatever, it doesn't matter, right? Because they have an agenda that they're, they're pushing. And that agenda, frankly, just isn't working. And this should not surprise anyone. I mean, this agenda has been tried all over the world many, many times. Go to Venezuela, go to uh, former communist Cambodia, go to Vietnam, go to uh, Russia. <laughs> Shall we go to the, the former Soviet Union? Look, it just doesn't work, okay? Capitalism, it may not be perfect, and, and I get it, like it still has its flaws, but gosh darn it, it's the best system we got right now on earth. And they seem, those in the White House, to want to just tear it down and rebuild something that has never worked before. So I would encourage them to think about the good things that we have done as a society, as a culture, as an economy, and to focus on those. Anyway, they can't. So. This is where we are, and the good news is Americans are realizing it. And this is why you have such a whopping number of people saying that they don't want him to run again. I mean, this is just incredible. Look, those high gas prices, they catch up with folks. One of the things that bothers me about the left is I think sometimes they don't really think about how stuff matters to everyday folks, right? Because 
life is good for them. You know, it's kind of a whole different ball game. They, you know, they don't have to worry about having police protection on their streets because they got all the private security they want. And they don't have to worry about this transition to green energy because, well, they've got all the gas they need for their gas tanks. You know, remember that they said, hey, just go buy a $60,000 EV vehicle. They didn't mention the price tag. I'm pointing that out only because people don't have this kind of money and they're stuck in this horrible transition right now and they're not happy about it. And that should come as no surprise. I think the Democrats, if they are smart, they're not, so they're probably not going to do this. But if they were smart, they would primary Joe Biden and they would put somebody else in. Problem is they get a very thin bench, which is also their own doing and their own fault. I'll tell you, they're not looking out for everyday Americans and bottom line, that's going to cost them. I do want to mention though, a group that is looking out for everyday Americans. And that's my friends, my friends over at AMAC, Association of American Mature Citizens. This is a wonderful, wonderful group. And I encourage you to join because you'll be joining forces with more than 2 million Americans that care about issues like inflation, like you do, like I do and that care about freedom and prosperity and opportunity for everyone. They also care about America's seniors. And look, it's tough. If you're living on a fixed income right now, sure, you, you may have gotten a boost in your social security check, but it's not enough to keep pace with how much prices are going up overall. And so America's seniors get hurt. America's middle class gets hurt. People that are just graduating from school and trying to get a leg up, they get hurt. Everyone gets hurt with inflation. I mean, except for, you know, the folks, I guess, that can really afford it, right? The, the elites that are in charge, and this is the problem. Anyway, I encourage you to join this group. One, because you'll be joining forces with so many like-minded people. You'll be able to have an effect on some of the policies that are being developed in Washington, D.C. and throughout the country. So there's that. And there's the other little added bonus of, you know, for $16 a year, you get all kinds of discounts on travel, on restaurants, on cell phone plans, and they'll help you navigate the tricky space of things like insurance. So it's a wonderful, wonderful group. amac.us slash Regan, my last name again, amac.us slash Regan. Go check it out. Sign up, 16 bucks a year. And believe me, it's money that is well spent. You can also re-sign up. In other words, re-up your membership there at amac.us slash Regan. But turning back to the political landscape and the economic mess that these people have created, I want to point out, again, Sununu's comments. They're the governor from Live Free or Die, New Hampshire. Great, great state, my home state. Former Miss New Hampshire here talking, so uh, a great place. I love it. And it, what he's saying is important. I mean, look, you can't fire really the Fed chairman, right, because he just got re-upped for another term. But somebody's going to be held responsible. And I, I'm perplexed how all these economists could have gotten it so wrong. If you've been listening to this show, you know I've been telling you over and over and over again, we were very much at risk for mass inflation. Here we are. These guys, these wonks, they just didn't see it. They tried to tell us it was transitory. It would be over in no time. Well, guess what? These things do get embedded into the economy. So shame on her for not picking up on this. And I guess if you're going to have to fire someone, you might want to start there. He won't do it, of course. You know, that, no way, no how. She's also, by the way, the first female Treasury Secretary. So Janet Yellen for the win. She got first female Fed Chair, first female Treasury Secretary. There's no way she's going anywhere, believe me. But shame on her. You know who he needs to hire? I got an idea for him. Not that he'd do it because he doesn't seem to do anything smart, but Larry Summers. Larry Summers, Treasury Secretary under Clinton. Larry Summers, who was also the head of the National Economic Council, under Obama, he gets it. He's actually been out there as well. His party's been hating him for this because he said, look guys, you're gonna have mass inflation. $1.9 trillion worth of stimulus plus a Federal Reserve that's buying up all the mortgage-backed securities and treasuries at $120 billion a month for years on end. Listen, this, this kind of stuff comes back to haunt you and the COVID stimulus checks and the fact that there was pent up demand, it was so obvious. So sure, fire Yellen, hire Larry Summers, and let's try and actually make a go of things, right? Let's actually try and be sensible. And I, I hey, I, I'd love some tax cuts in there too, but you know, I'm not going to get greedy. I would just actually like some people with some brain cells to have important jobs in Washington, D.C. This is really, I think the situation right now is such an indicator of the lack of leadership that's coming both from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris.
I mean, Kamala Harris, for sure. I mean, we've seen that over and over again. You've seen all the word salad. She can't seem to answer a question. She laughs a lot. The political consultants surrounding her ought to actually like take her away for a weekend and say, okay, okay, we're going to work on this, right? Because she could have had a big future. I mean, I actually think it's over now. I don't know how she recovers from the sort of total you know, travesty that has become her tenure thus far. So she's out of the, she's out of the mix. I mean, they could look to somebody like Gavin Newsom, somebody who's not in the administration right now, perhaps to run in primary, Joe Biden. Nonetheless, nonetheless, I think Americans have just kind of had it. If this continues and if this keeps up in two years time, without a doubt, a Republican's going to win because people are saying, wait, this, this, this just didn't work. Heck, take a look at Florida. Look at the surplus that was just reported. We have a story on my website, Trish Intel, I-N-T-E-L, TrishIntel.com, a website about how Florida's got this tremendous surplus. You know, in other words, they got extra money. They've got extra money. They're taking in tons of tax revenue. Everybody's moving to Florida. Everybody's moving to Texas. Everybody's moving to places where you can have more freedom, both in terms of your own personal life, but also in terms of your business and, and being free from regulation and taxation that's going to hurt that small business and big business, right? Caterpillar just announced it's moving to Texas. So lots of good things in a lot of these states. But ultimately, this poll tells you everything you need to know. Joe Biden's done. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back here tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe and we'll talk again.